Okay, before, this is, what a great way to cap the first half. Gail and Ed Fisher, I've known them for quite some time now, and you couldn't find two more erudite, delicious souls that if you ever find yourself in the crapper of depression, to know that there are these people that are out there of goodness. And um, Gail is a special education teacher with over 35 years of experience in the public schools, helping pioneer dual language programs in Westchester. Locally, she has been instrumental in creating and developing after school remedial reading as well as keeping elementary French alive in Pine Bush. There you go, woman. Not to mention cursive skills. And, and g when I look at my son's handwriting, <laughs> there is no script. And don't they realize there's a direct correlation with hemispheres? And, and your right, left hemisphere from a lineal standpoint, from a pictorial standpoint, and cursive skills. I remember, as this, I was always, I'm a precocious five-year-old now, but I remember when I was in third grade, and if you remember, when we were learning how to write, you had these very large, with a dotted line for lowercase, and there might be an example of it on the green board or the black board, depending on the school. And I remember seeing the capital letter E, and I was mystified by it. I said, that's a three. But it wasn't because the three were right. But the loops, and you look at the loops, and you subsequently realize with all the subsequent insane years of my life and quantum mechanics and string theory and M theory and nanotechnology and all of this, is that everything is a spiral. And without even knowing it, cursive learning skills was demonstrating life. And we don't do that anymore. We have to bring it back. Ed, the other half, taught high school English. I would have never known. And Uganda as a Peace Corps volunteer and worked for 30 years as a play therapist and adventure-based counselor with special needs children. He holds a bachelor's degree in literature and doctorate in psychology, so watch yourself, people. This guy can footnote anything. But being serious, Ed has, and Gail, have graced us for so many years, and I love them when they're in our circles. Ed has been in our circles more than Gail has, and demonstrating his prowess for language and his love of language. It's, it's just a great thrill. Would you guys come up? Uh, we're going to do something very special tonight, which is a celebration of African American history and story and song. Grace us, people. On the back, none of this is original. On the back, if you, if you want to know the authors and look them up and read more of their work, all the attributions are on the back of the flyer. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to need this. You don't need it. The camera needs it. Okay. Cheat to me. Poetry has its roots in ritual, an incantation, an incantation to induce a trance or cast a magic spell, to exorcise evil or communicate with the world of spirits. So let's begin by lifting the place we gather together in tonight to a higher ground with this rhythmic chant from the African diaspora. Let's go back to Eden and kill the snake. Me yombe bombe, my yombe. Me yombe bombe, my yombe. Me yombe bombe, my yombe. 
The snake has eyes of glass. The snake appears and it winds around the post. With eyes of glass around the post. With her eyes of glass. The snake creeps without feet. The snake hides in the grass. Hides creeping in the grass. Creeps without feet. Me yombe bombe, ma yombe. Me yombe bombe, ma yombe. Me yombe bombe, ma yombe. Give her the axe and she dies. Give it her now. Don't give her the foot for she bites. Don't give her the foot for she runs. Sinsemaya the snake. Sinsemaya. Sinsemaya with the eyes. Sinsemaya. Sinsemaya with the tongue. Sinsemaya. Sinsemaya with the mouth. Sinsemaya. The dead snake does not eat. The dead snake does not hiss, does not creep, does not run. The dead snake does not drink. The dead snake does not look, does not breathe, does not bite. Mayombe, bombe, mayombe. Since Maya the snake, Mayombe Bombe Mayombe. Since Maya does not move, Mayombe Bombe Mayombe. Since Maya the snake, Mayombe Bombe Mayombe. Since Maya is dead. Eagle tripping. There may be a reason. I was born in the Congo. I walked to the Fertile Crescent and built the Sphinx. I designed a pyramid so tough that a star that only glows every 100 years falls into the center, giving divine, perfect light. I am bad. I sat on the throne, drinking nectar with Allah. I got hot and sent an ice age to Europe to cool my thirst. My oldest daughter, Nefertiti, my oldest daughter, Nefertiti, the tears from my birth pains created the Nile. I am a beautiful woman. I gazed on the forest and burned out the Sahara Desert. With a packet of goat's meat and a change of clothes, I crossed it in two hours. I am a gazelle so swift, so swift, you can't catch me. For a birthday present when he was three, I gave my son Hannibal an elephant. He gave me Rome for Mother's Day. <laughs> my strength flows on. My son Noah built new ark, and I stood proudly at the helm. As we sailed on a soft summer day, I turned myself into myself, and I was Jesus. Men intone my loving name, all praises, all praises. I am the one who would save. I sow diamonds in my backyard. My bowels deliver uranium. The filings from my fingernails are simming precious jewels. On a trip north, I caught a cold and blew my nose, giving oil to the Arab world. I am so hip. Even my errors are correct. I sailed west to reach east, and I had to round off the earth as I went. The hair on my head thinned, and the gold was laid across three continents. I am so perfect, so divine, so ethereal, 
so surreal I cannot be comprehended, except with my permission. I mean, I can fly like a bird in the sky. I am the man the color of night, leaf in the wind, I go at the drift of my dreams. I am the tree budding in spring, the dew that hums in the baobab's hollow. Leaf in the wind, I go at the drift of my dreams. I am the man they complain of because opposed to formality, the man they laugh at because opposed to barriers. Leaf in the wind, I go at the drift of my dreams. I am the man they talk about, oh him, him you cannot hold, the breeze that touches you and is gone. Leaf in the wind, I go at the drift of my dreams. Captain at the stern, scanning the scudding cloud for the earth's powerful eye, Ship without sail that glides on the sea. Leaf in the wind, I go at the drift of my dreams. I am the man whose dreams are manifold as the stars, more murmurous than swarms of bees, more, sick, more smiling than children's smiles, more sonorous than echoes in the woods. Leaf in the wind, I go at the drift of my dreams. <coughs> the people could fly. They say the people could fly. Say that long ago in Africa, some of the people knew magic, and they would walk up on the air like climbing up on a gate. And they flew like blackbirds over the fields, black shiny wings flapping against the blue up there. Then, many of the people were captured for slavery. The ones that could fly shed their wings. They couldn't take their wings across the water on the slave ships, too crowded, don't you know? The folks were full of misery, then got sick with the up and down of the sea. So they forgot about flying when they could no longer breathe the sweet scent of Africa. Say the people who could fly kept their power, although they shed their wings. They kept their secret magic in the land of slavery. They looked the same as the other people from Africa who had been coming over who had dark skin, say you couldn't tell anymore one who could fly from one who couldn't. One such who could was an old man called, called him Toby. And standing tall, yet afraid, was a young woman who once had wings. Call her Sarah. Now Sarah carried a babe tied to her back. She trembled to be so hard worked and scorned. The slaves labored in the fields from sunup to sundown. The owner of the slaves calling himself their master. Say he was a hard lump of clay, a hard glinty coal, a hard rock pile, wouldn't be moved. His overseer on horseback pointed out the slaves who were slowing down. So the one called driver cracked his whip over the slow ones to make them move faster. That whip was a slice open cut of pain. So they did move faster, had to. Sarah hold and chopped the row as the babe on her back slept. Say the child grew hungry that the babe started up bawling too loud. Sarah couldn't stop to feed it, couldn't stop to soothe it and quiet it down. She let it cry. She didn't want to. She had no heart to croon it. Keep that thing quiet, called the overseer. He pointed his finger at the babe. 
The woman scrunched low. The driver cracked his whip across the bait anyhow. The bait hollered like any hurt child, and the woman fell to the earth. The old man that was there, Toby, came and helped her to her feet. I must go soon, she told him. Soon, he said. Sarah couldn't stand straight up any longer. She was too weak. The sun burned her face. The babe cried and cried, pity me, oh pity me, say it sounded like. Sarah was so sad and starving, she sat down on the row. Get up, you black cow, called the overseer. He pointed his hand and the driver's whip snarled around Sarah's legs. Her sack dress tore into rags. Her legs bled onto the earth. She couldn't get up. Toby was there where there was no one to help her and the babe. Now, before it's too late, panted Sarah. Now, father. Yes, daughter, the time has come. Toby answered. Go as you know how to go. He raised his arms, holding them out to her. Kum yali kum bubak tambe. And the more magic words said so quickly they sounded like whispers and sighs. The young woman lifted one foot on the air, then the other. She flew clumsily at first, with the child now held tightly in her arms. Then she felt the magic, the African mystery. Save she rose just as free as a bird, as light as a feather. The overseer rode after her, hollering. Sarah flew over the fences. She flew over the woods. Tall trees could not snag her, nor could the overseer. She flew like an eagle now until she was gone from sight. No one dare speak about it. Couldn't believe it. But it was because they that was there saw that it was. Say the next day was dead hot in the fields. A young man slave fell from the heat. The driver come and whipped him. Toby come over and spoke words to the fallen one. The words of ancient Africa once heard are never completely forgotten. The young man forgot them as soon as he heard them. They went way inside him. He got up and rolled over on the air. He rode it a while and then he flew away. Another and another fell from the heat. Toby was there. He cried out to the fallen and reached his arms out to them. Kum kankayale, kum tambe. Whispers and sighs, and they too rose on the air. They rode the hot breezes. The ones flying were black and shining sticks, wheeling above the head of the overseer. They crossed the roads, the fields, the fences, the streams and were away. Seize the old man, cried the overseer. I heard him say the magic word, seize him. The one calling himself master come running. The driver got his whip ready to curl around old Toby and tie him up. The slave owner took his hip gun from his plates. He meant to kill old black Toby, but Toby just laughed. He threw his head back and said, <laughs> Don't you know who I am? Don't you know some of us in this field? He said, he said it to his, their faces. We are ones who fly. And he sighed the ancient words with a dark promise. He said them all around to the others in the field under the whip. Buba Yali, Buba Tambe. There was a great outcry. The bent backs straightened up, old and young who were called slaves and could fly joined hands. Say like they would ring sing, but they didn't shuffle in a circle. They didn't sing. They rose on the air. They flew into a flock that was black against the heavenly blue. Black crows or black shadows, it didn't matter. They were so high. Way above the plantation, way over the slavery land, say they flew away to Freedom. And the old man, Toby, flew behind them, taking care of them. He wasn't crying. He wasn't laughing. He was a seer. His gaze fell on the plantation where the slaves who could not fly waited. 
take us with you. Their looks spoke, but they were afraid to shout it. Toby couldn't take them with them. Hadn't the time to teach them to fly. They must wait for a chance to run. Goodbye. The old man called Toby, spoke to them. Poor souls. And he was flying gone. So they say, the overseer told it. The one called master said it was a lie. Trick of the light. The driver kept his mouth shut. The slaves who could not fly told about the people who could fly to their children when they were free. When they sat close before the fire in the free land, they told it. They did so love the firelight and freedom and telling. They say that the children of the ones who could fly, who could not fly, told their children. And now, me, I have told it to you. seemed reasonable, location indifferent. The landlady swore she lived off premises. Nothing remained but self-confession. Madam, I warned, I hate a wasted journey. I am African. Silence. Silence, transmission of pressurized good breeding, voice when it came, lipstick coated, long gold rolled cigarette holder pipped. Caught I was foully. How dark. I had not misheard. Are you light or very dark? Button B, button A, stench of rancid breath of public hide and speak. Red booth, red pillar box, red double-tiered omnibus squelching tar. It was real. Shamed by ill-mannered silence, surrender pushed dumbfoundment to, to beg simplification. Considerate she was, varying the emphasis. Are you dark? or very light. Revelation came. Uh, you mean like plain or milk chocolate? Her ascent was clinical, crushing in its light impersonality. Rapidly, wavelength adjusted, I chose West African sepia. <laughs> and as an afterthought, down in my passport, Silence for spectroscopic flight of fancy till truthfulness clanged her ascent hard on the mouthpiece. What's that? Conceding, don't know what that is. Well, like brunette. That's dark, isn't it? Not altogether. Facially, I am brunette. But madam, you should see the rest of me. Palm of my hand, sole of my feet are a peroxide blonde. Friction caused, foolishly, madam, by sitting down has turned my bottom raven black. One moment, madam. Sensing her receiver rearing on the thunderclap about my ears. Madam, I pleaded, wouldn't you rather see for yourself? Mother to son. Well, son, I'll tell you. Life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time, I've been a climbing on, and reaching landings, and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark, where there ain't been no light. So, boy, don't you turn back. 
Don't you sit down on the steps, cause you find it kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I still going, honey. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. I thank you, God, for creating me black, for making of me porter of all sorrows, setting on my head the world. I where the centaurs hide, and I have carried the world since the first morning. White is the color for special occasions, black the color for every day. And I have carried the world since the first morning. I am glad of the shape of my head made to carry the world, content with the shape of my nose that must snuff every wind of the world, pleased with the shape of my legs, ready to run all the heats of the world. I thank you, God, for creating me black, for making of me porter of all sorrows. Thirty-six swords have pierced my heart. Thirty-six fires have burned my body. And my blood on all Calvaries has reddened the snow. And my blood at every dawn has reddened all nature. Still, I am glad to carry the world, glad of my short arms, of my long arms, of the thickness of my lips. I thank you, God, for creating me black. White is the color for special occasions. Black, the color for every day. And I have carried the world since the dawn of time. And my laugh over the world through the night creates the day. I thank you, God, for creating me black. I'm being brought from Africa to America. Twas mercy brought me from my pagan land, taught my benighted soul to understand that there's a God and there's a Savior too. Once I redemption neither sought nor knew. Some view our sable race with scornful eye. Their color is a diabolic dye. Remember, Christians, Negroes, black as Cain, may be refined and join the angelic train. This is a porter's song, sung uh, by African men carrying supplies for the European explorers. It goes like this. Jumbe di peleke kwe tu jumbe. Jumbe ni peleke kwe tu jumbe. Ni melewa sana sina pakulala ni peleke kwe tu jumbe. Ni melewa sana sina pakulala ni peleke kwe tu jumbe. Jumbe ni peleke kwe tu jumbe. Jumbe ni peleke kwe tu jumbe. Ni melewa sana sina pagulala ni peleke kwe tu jumbe. Ni melewa sana sina pagulala ni peleke kwe tu jumbe. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you so beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells 
pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it hard, cause I like laughing like I've got gold men, mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance? like I got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from the past that rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind the nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's miraculously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. There I go. I just want to give credit. Sense Maya is by Nicholas Guillen. Ego Tripping by Nikki Giovanni. Leaf in the Wind by Bernard Dadi. The People Could Fly by Virginia Hamilton. Telephone Conversation by Rolf Soyinka. Mother to a Son, Langston Hughes. I Thank You God by Bernard Dadi on being brought from Africa by Phyllis Wheatley, Jumbe, anonymous, but obviously that's truly the spirit of Africa. And still I rise, most delicious, gracious Maya Angelou. And um, what happened to two brothers I had brought to earth? There we go. Study that as we take a break. God bless you. See you in 10. Okay, before, this is, what a great way to cap the first half. Gail and Ed Fisher, I've known them for quite some time now, and you couldn't find two more erudite, delicious souls that if you ever find yourself in the crapper of depression, to know that there are these people that are out there of goodness. And um, Gail is a special education teacher with over 35 years of experience in the public schools, helping pioneer dual language programs in Westchester. Locally, she has been instrumental in creating and developing after-school remedial reading as well as keeping elementary French alive in Pine Bush. There you go, woman. Not to mention cursive skills and... and g when I look at my son's handwriting... <laughs> there is no script. It, it, and don't they realize there's a direct correlation with hemispheres? And, and your right, left hemisphere from a lineal standpoint, from a pictorial standpoint, and cursive skills. I remember, as this, I was always, I'm a precocious five-year-old now, but I remember when I was in third grade, and if you remember, when we were learning how to write, you had these very large, with a dotted line for lowercase, and there might be an example of it on the green board or the blackboard, depending on the school. 
And I remember seeing the capital letter E. And I was mystified by it. I said, that's a three. But it wasn't because the three were right. But the loops, and you look at the loops, and you subsequently realize with all the subsequent insane years of my life and quantum mechanics and string theory and M theory and nano.